In this video, we want to hammer home some of the concepts that we looked at in the introduction video. So let's start by looking at these three exponential equations. They're already given, us, given to us in exponential form, and we just want to interpret them. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to find the initial population for each of these three cities. And so if you remember, this, the, the form of our equation was P equals P0, our initial population, times A, which is some growth factor, to the power of t. All right, and so in each of these equations, my p0 here is 83, my p0 in b is 90, and my p0 in c is 88. And if you're ever doubting that, you can just go back to the equation and just plug in t equals 0. And that'll give you your initial initial value, right? That's going to give you the output value at t equals 0, if we think back to our 1.1 lesson on functions. Now, something that takes a little, is a little bit more involved is finding our percent rate of change. And so that's not just the value for a. It's something a little bit different. Remember that our percent rate of change, we had a was equal to 1 plus r. So in a sense, it's how much our a differs from 1. So in problem A, our city is growing by 18% per year because T is in years. So 18% per year. In part two, our city is growing by 10% per year. Point one is 10%. So 10% per year. So it's growing a little bit slower than city A. And city C is actually not growing at all, 0% per year. But that's just interpreting an equation. What if we had something a little bit different? What if we had something like this? So they're actually giving us the situation here and asking us to produce a formula. I, I put my money in with some shady investor. My money can go up and down really quickly. And we need to write an equation for how much money I have on a given day. So with problem A, with this investor, this is a great investor. My money's just going up $200 per day. Is this an exponential function? Think about what it's telling you. It's increasing by $200 a day. That's actually just a constant rate of change, constant increments, right? If you think about that table where T is increasing by one each time, I'm just adding 200 to each of my output values on the bottom. So here, my Y would actually be a linear function, MX plus B. So what would M be? This would be my slope. It's increasing by $200 every day. And what would my intercept be? Well, it'd be what I started with, plus 1,000. So after three days here, so f of three, if this was f of x, f of three would be 200 times three plus 1,000, or it would be 1,600. Now this next one, it tells me my money's increasing by 20% every day. Again, another great investor, but this is no longer a linear equation, right? This is that percent rate of change. And so my initial value here, again, is going to be that 1,000, but I'm going to be trying to fit it into my P0 A to the T formula. And so I'll start with my 1,000 as P0, but how do I figure out what to put in this A spot, right? And so this value they're actually giving you here, this is R, when they tell you it's increasing by a certain percentage. And so what we want to do is we want to remember that A was equal to 1 plus R. So in this, value, in this problem, R is 0.2. And so my A will be 1 plus 0.2 or 1.2. With C, it's, it's pretty similar. We start with $1,000, except R here. It's not going to be 0.2, even though we have that 20%. It says it's decreasing. Really bad investor decreasing by 20% per day, so my A is going to be 1 minus 0.2, which in this case is 0 0.8. And to figure out F of 3 in each of these last two cases, I would just plug in 3 into this value of T. I'd do that in my calculator. For this problem, you should get um, 1728. And for this problem, you should get 512. So notice that in this example, they gave us basically the exact numbers we needed, right? They gave us our P0 exactly, and they also basically gave us A, right? They gave us this R, which we could get A with really, really easily. What if they make us do a little bit more work? So let's look at this example. And in this example, we'll read it in a second, but they don't give us P0 and A. What they give us is two points on our line. 
All right. And so specifically, they're saying I go to Starbucks or uh, Starbuck, as my friend's roommate likes to call it. And I notice that two hours after I drink my super biggest coffee I can buy, there's 300 milligrams of caffeine in my system. Four hours after I drink it, there's 200. So on a graph, basically what they're doing is they're telling us, well, if I have an input of two, my output is 300. If I have an input of four, my output is then 200. And it's saying basically figure out what this line looks, or not line, but this curve, this exponential curve looks like. And so basically we're trying to jam it into this P equals P0 A to the T formula. Right? And it's going to be a little bit tricky. But let's just start by writing down what we know. We know that at T equals 2, P is 300. And we also know that at T equals 4, P equals 200. So let's put these values, these input output pairs into our equation to see what we can kind of get there. So this tells me that 300 is equal to my initial value times a to the second power and that 200 is equal to my initial value times a to the fourth power. Right? So all we've written down is we've written down what we know, right? We have a couple input output pairs and we've put them in the equation that we need that we know it's going to need to fit into, right? And so now we got to figure out how to use these two equations to figure out what a and p0 are. Basically, we have to solve for a and p0. And so the way it's going to work with these uh, with this with this setup is that you're actually going to need to divide the equations. And so let's see how that ends up looking. So I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to put it on the top. So I'm going to have p0 a to the fourth on top and then on the bottom of my equation I'm going to have this this one so p0 a squared right and on the other side of my equality I got to I got to do the same thing so this equation was on top on the left side so it's going to have to be on top on the right side so on the right side I'll have 200 and then same thing here so this was on the bottom on the left side so this needs to be on the bottom on the left side that'll be 300 and the reason we do this is, remember, we're trying to solve for P0 or A, but when I divide them like this, my P0s are going to drop out, and I'm going to be left with an equation that only has A's. Specifically, I'll have A to the 4 minus 2. This is an exponent rule from algebra. If you have, an, if you have the same base A on the top as the bottom, you can just subtract the exponents. And then on the right side, I'm going to have 2 thirds. And this is going to tell me that A squared is equal to 2 thirds or that a is equal to the square root of two-thirds. Right? So we're a lot closer than we used to be. We now know that our equation needs to look something like p equals p0. We still haven't figured out what p0 is yet, but p equals p0 a to the t, but now we know that a is the square root of two-thirds. So the only thing left we're left with finding is this P0. How do we do that? Well, we actually can just go back and want to use one of those initial data points that we had. So let's plug in this T equals 2, this input-output pair. If we do an input of 2, what should we get as an output? We should get 300 as an output. So I'm going to put 300 over here. Now we can actually just solve this, right? So 300 is equal to P0 and two thirds, the square root of two thirds squared is just two thirds, and now I can multiply this over to the other side to get P0 is equal to 300 times 3 halves, which is just 450, right? And so I can put all this together and get my final equation of P equals. 450 root 3 over 2 over 3 to the power of t. And just to summarize what I did here, the big picture was I just took, they gave me two data points, and so I just plugged those into the equation that I knew had to be true, right? And then my goal from there is going to be to figure out what a and p0 are. So I divided to get rid of the p0 that allowed me to find a. And then once I had found A, I just plugged in one of the points into my equation 
and that allowed me to solve for P0.